quick question real quick. Um, do you know any terrorist organizations that accept Jello as a form of payment? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Um I I think they all do now actually. Oh yeah? Yeah, that 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 there's a new Jello oh. payment program they just started. Is that oh. that's all you needed, right? Is that, is that all you is that all you need? And I'd send over the Jello, and it took two weeks to get notarized, and now I gotta send it to Costa Rica so their guys can look over it that there's no mistakes. And it's just all, it's all oh, they're all bureaucrats, the terrorist organizations. And um, but um, hey, you look like you're having fun. Who's uh, what's 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 this? Who, who's who's that? Um, like Marilyn Chin. Seriously, a Chinese activist poet. No, she won a whole bunch of awards. You signed up for her Freak of the Week. Uh, no? Nothing. No, nothing? Yeah, no, absolutely nothing. Yeah, I, 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 I figure as much. I will say that, however, as far as poets go, she is a very voluptuous temptress. She's single? What? No, wait, what? She's 56! Are you gonna sit there with a disapproving look on your face and tell me that you really don't find experience sexy? Okay, you know what? When you bust in here, Talking about giving jail over to terrorists and getting on my nerves, that I can deal with. But when you start disrupting work, that is not okay. Now, do you want me to get an F on this project? No. Well, do you want me to go to another room because you're being disruptive? No. Well, what do you want then? I don't know. Well, then I don't know either. Seriously. You can learn to be a little bit more considerate. Okay. Can I still wash whatever it is that you're doing? You know what? Fine. Fine. This is a self-introduction of sorts. It's called How I Got That Name, an essay on assimilation. This is Marilyn Chin back in I 1994. How she Marilyn sees the world around has a lot to do with her oh, upbringing. In 1955, she was born in Hong Kong. She moved to Oregon when she was six, so she was exposed to assimilation at a really young age. Much of my poetry is about assimilation, the fear and loathing of it, and the, um, and the wonderful celebration of it. Her father's obsession with Western culture was what made Marilyn initially loathe it. Her father would often gamble away the family's money, and she and her mother with other women. His obsession with the West led to changing Marilyn Chin's name from Mei Ling to Marilyn after her father's favorite actress, Marilyn Monroe. And there I was, a wayward pink baby, named after some tragic white woman, swollen with gin and nembutal. My mother couldn't pronounce the R. She dubbed me number one female offshoot <laughs> for brevity. Henceforth, in 1982, Chin received her Master of Fine Arts degree from the University of Iowa, where she had worked as an editor and translator in their international writing program. In 1987, she released her first poetry collection. Dwarf Bamboo explored the benefits and hardships that came along with the assimilation of cultures. Assimilation must happen. There's no way they can, that, that I can uh, force my children to speak um, Chinese. There's no way that, that the pure yellow seed, as my grandmother calls, calls it, will continue. A pure yellow seed. Yes, the, um, well, I, I, I guess it's her, her, the Chinese are, <laughs> they want to keep the, the blood pure. And my, my grandmother, um, she used to sit on the porch with a broom and try to sweep away the white boys from, <laughs> from dating us. But it's, it's inescapable. Assimilation is inescapable. And I am afraid of losing my Chinese, losing my language. It's like losing a part of my soul. And, and so the grandeur of China, the grandeur of that past of my grandfathers, my grandmothers, my mother, and so forth, um, that's lost to me. And poetry is a way to recapture that. Her future work more deeply explored her personal life. Rasputi and Plain Yellow in 2011 further detailed the troubles and joys of her family and assimilation. 
and her 2009 novel, Revenge of the Mooncake Vixen, was inspired by events with her grandmother in her own life. Out of my personal experience, one event that hurt me most when I was a child, I was around six, and, uh, or actually seven, when we first arrived to America. My father had a white lover, and, um, and he was on the phone with her in, in an adjoining room, and my mother couldn't speak English, and she was in, um, in the living room um, um, sewing, and, um, and she didn't understand what was going on. And f as a child, that, that was a very damaging experience. And in my poetry, I tried to resolve this deep pain and guilt I feel for my mother. I see her as um, the bridge that brought us over, and, and she's the sacrifice. Marilyn's reverence for her mother grew into a respect for all strong-willed people as she developed into a feminist and activist. Her activist ideology began making its way into her poetry by 1994. Bayesian Spring, a section of her second poetry collection, A Phoenix Gone, The Terrace Empty, dealt with the 1989 student protests in Tiananmen Square. Ma, you've poached a symbol of long life. That turtle lived 4,000 years, swam the way up the yellow over the Yangtze, witnessed the Bronze Age, the high tongue, grazed on splendid sericulture. So she boils the life out of him. All our ancestors have been fools. Remember Uncle Wu who rode 10,000 miles to kill a famous Manchu and ended up with his head on a Today, pole? Today, Marilyn Shin works in the Each Department child, of English and Comparative Literature at San Diego State University. Sometimes Her life of struggling and balancing Sometimes assimilation has garnered the attention and praise of many institutions. So Over the years, Marilyn Shin has received the Stancher Fellowship, decorous. the Patterson Prize, and multiple Baby fellowships from the Radcliffe Institute at Harvard, as well as fellowships the from the Rockefeller Institute and the National Endowment for the Arts. She has received four so Pushcart Prizes God. and the Penn Oakland Josephine Miles Literary Award. Let me ask you to read the prelude to your book. To my mother, to love your country is to know its beginnings not with the bald-faced moon or the complacent river, but here within you. Your heart is a house. I, we, are its inhabitants. Although the country is lost, rivers and mountains remain, and we shall always live in this poetry that you love. Hmm. You know what? I dare say she's actually a pretty interesting poet. Kind of hits home for you, though. Yeah, the way she makes her rhythm match her tone and diction. Wait, what? Well, what I mean is, you've completely assimilated into Western culture, yeah? What? No, I haven't. Well, I'm, I'm totally Asian. Well, how many Asian guys do you know go to school wearing polo shirts and slacks every day? A lot of them do. And they, they, they know what you were talking You're wearing one right now. True, but when I do it, it's cute. When you wear the white man's clothes, you set okay. back our people right. hundreds of okay. years. You, you obviously miss the have you think about that one for a bit. What she means when she talks about the assimilation of cultures. Where are you going? You know, I very much like this male and chin lady. She's an activist. She doesn't have anyone to tell her what's right. I'm going to find her and see if she wants to help us make some jello. You sit tight, okay? That's not what she... Close enough.